not too long ago, I released this video right here. It was called the Web Hacking Roadmap, where I talked about the different skills and things you need to learn in order to become a good web hacker or get started with web hacking. And a lot of the comments mentioned things like, hey, we want more resources, give us more. This is not a complete roadmap. And why not make another video and include them all in this one? So this video is not going to be a roadmap per se of what you need to learn, but I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide of resources mostly free. We're going to focus on the free ones and talk about some paid ones at the ends, but mostly some free ones that you can use if you want to get into web hacking, whether you want to become a pen tester, a red teamer, or even a bug bounty hunter. But before we jump into the video, I got to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Sneak, for making this video happen. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm a big advocate for bug bounty hunting and the hacking community. And sometimes getting into hacking and ethical hacking could be very difficult. If you want to get started with ethical hacking, Sneak is hosting the Ethical Hacking 101 workshop on June 21st. Not only will you learn about the tools and resources to use to get started, but you will also learn how to proactively identify and fix security vulnerabilities like prototype pollution and path traversal before they can be exploited. The most important thing is you will also get a walkthrough of the process of responsible disclosure. That means you'll not only be able to find and fix vulnerabilities, but you also know what to do if you come across one and the sneak team will be with you every step of the way and offering you live support and walkthrough. So join Sneak's Ethical Hacking 101 workshop on June 21st at 11 a.m. Again, it's free and it's going to be virtual and you can sign up for free using this link right here. and It'll be in the description of this video as well. All right, let's get back to the video. The first one that we want to take a look at is the Web Fundamentals by TryHack Me. If you looked at my last video, you know that I mentioned that you need to learn the Web Fundamentals. And I think this room right here specifically does a really good job of explaining all the things that I have mentioned in that video from how DNS works, from the HTTP in detail, how website works, and then putting it all together. And then it goes into the introduction to web hacking. I highly recommend doing this and going through it. We'll have another resource for this specifically, but since you're already here and doing this, you may as well look at this introduction to web hacking portion of this course. Then you can look at Burb Suite and then this one right here pretty much tells you about the Burb Suite basics. It helps you install Burb Suite and it kind of walks you through the small or the high level things you need to learn about Burb Suite before looking at the next section, which is kind of a broad one. It talks about the OWASP top 10, which goes hand in hand with wanting to learn web hacking. It has OWASP juice shop that we talk about in a little bit. That's pickle Rick and upload vulnerabilities. This fourth section isn't really something that's required or I recommend doing. But to be honest, the first, second, and third part of this resource is great, especially if you have no background in web or web hacking. So check these out. And once you're done with it, you're going to close this one out and start looking at our next one, which is Portswigger Academy. You can go to portswigger.net web security, and it will bring this up for you. If you see me doing some of these, I actually solve a lot of these on my uh, streams once in a while. But the good thing about this is it's similar to what I showed you with Try Hack Me, but they have these paths that focus on just web vulnerabilities and not so much on the basics of web and so on. So the way it works is you can pick a vulnerability type. So if you want to learn about authentication, for example, or something like direct traversal, you can click on that particular topic and it's going to show you a series of reading material and it's going to also show you a bunch of labs that go hand in hand with it. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can go back to the WebSec Academy main page and just go through the topics and just go into all labs actually click on there and pick each topic that you want to learn i personally think you should start with something like cross site scripting csrf idor and then just go through all of them one by one and another cool thing about this is the fact that they have these tags on the top right here that tells you what level you should expect so if it's uh if it's a hard one you will see it if it's a pen test if it's practitioner and so on you will see the difficulty level expert and you can decide whether or not you want to do it so if you go to the labs and you click on something like stored dom xss it's going to not only have the lab right here but you can also click on the topic at the top and it will give you all the reading material that goes with this exact topic so it's very very well done it's very well organized it's 100 percent for free but they have a downfall, which is they're just a point and solve, which means you just they point you to the vulnerability type and then just say, hey, you have to go solve it, which is great if you don't know these concepts. But I think at some point you're going to hit a dead end with it because you need to become good at 
looking for vulnerabilities in real application, which brings me to my next point, which is Hacker 101. And with Hacker 101, if you go to the CTF site, which is ctf.hacker101.com, they give you actual applications that you can start. And upon starting this, it's a fake application that we don't know what vulnerabilities it has, but you have the whole concept of this is that you want to look for vulnerabilities like you would in a bug bounty program or an engagement. So with Hacker 101, it should be your third step that you go and you look at Hacker 101 and it kind of teaches you, hey, you look at an application, what kind of vulnerabilities should you look for, where to look for them and so on. So in comparison to Portswigger, it's not so much of, hey, learn the vulnerability types. It kind of forces you to look for these vulnerability types without knowing what you're looking for. On the topic of hacking web applications, and I also kind of talked about this briefly in the earlier resources, is OWASP Juice Shop. So OWASP Juice Shop is created by OWASP. The whole concept of this is to teach you the OWASP Top 10, which is kind of similar to what you would do with web hacking anyways. And the cool thing is they've created this fake web application in the form of a juice shop where you get to sign up and test the sign up flow. You get to test these different functionalities. There's upload, there is... Uh, IDORs, there's APIs, there's all these different vulnerabilities that you can look for within this application. You can either go to juiceshop.haruku.com. I will link that down below, or you can actually do it on TryHackMe. It was also on TryHackMe's website, or you can just download the source of this uh, entire application, use Docker or install it on your own. So those were the free resources and these different platforms you can use. Again, try hack me isn't free, but that one path was for free. But what if you have a little bit of money to spare and you want to spend some money on monthly or a course, something like that to learn, you have options. So your first one is try hack me that I covered. You can actually pay to have these different pads. There is actually junior pen testing. There is your offensive security. There's red teaming. But for web specifically, they have all these different smaller rooms that you can look at if you want to get better at web hacking. So you can just actually click on these. And if it's free, you can use it. And some of them that are not free, for example, this one is uh, supplement enumeration. It's you know for the VIPs. IDOR is for the VIP. That means you have to pay for it. So it's worth the, I think, $15 to spend some money and learn and just understand these basic concepts. Keep in mind that TryHackMe does a lot of hand-holding, so it's really good for beginners because they just give you a lot of different ways to learn and they ask the right questions and it seems like they hold your hand through their process a lot, which is good if you're very, very new, but it kind of gets boring or it just stops the whole process of progressing after a while, which I think Hack the Box comes into play. Again, both of these platforms are great. So with Hack the Box, what you can do is that they have all these different tabs. There's the labs, which is the one that I've used the most, and there's Academy. I can't comment on Academy and tell you if it's good or how it is. I, I've heard good stuff. I've never used it, but the Academy is similar to the WebSec Academy. They have different paths. You can learn from them, and I'm pretty sure they have some bug bounty course on there. But what I really like about them is these machines right here. So you can go into your machines, and you can use the retired machines and I'm pretty sure they're free in some case, in most cases. And you can actually select a skill that you want to actually hack on. So let me go to advanced search and we can just take category and say web, and it will give you all these different web challenges that you can hack and get your hands on. And if you want to spend the money, I think it's about $18 a month. You can sign up for it and you get access to all these different ones. And honestly, you don't have to do just the challenges or the machines. You can also do all these different uh, tabs that they have on this side. But I've only done the challenges because of my stream. I've only done the retired machines and retired challenges. But again, they are a very good platform if you want to get into hacking as well. We talked about these different ones. We talked about Try Hack Me. We talked about Hack the Box. There are two more that I would like to talk about. One is Pentester Lab. Pentester Lab costs about $20 a month, I believe. And they have a lot of different exercises and you can pretty much search for what you want. But the cool thing about them is that they also cover CVEs and they have a lot of different hacker challenges that's not just specific to Vuln types, but it's also geared towards techniques and that sort of stuff. But you can also look at average time that it takes to complete the difficulty and the number of users that have completed. So if you're up for the challenge and you want to learn more, pentesterlab.com is another one. And the last one that I want to recommend on the platform side that I, I enjoyed, I've used a lot in the past and I'm really excited about it is ctfchallenge.com. If you go to the challenges right here, uh, there are some free ones. This costs a little bit of money. I think it's like 45 bucks, but it showed earlier. But these are very, very cool because they give you some small challenge that's pretty much based on HackerOne's activity, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
but they're based on real vones or to just create some infrastructure that's really fun to poke around and hack into. So I really recommend them. You can see there's all these different challenges. They're going to cost some money, but there's also some free ones that you can click on and then launch and get into it. So we talked about these platforms. We talked about the free resources. We talked about the paid resources, but what about some reading material? So one of the ones that I really, really recommend you go to is hackerone.com activity. What activity does is it shows you a number of different vulnerabilities that have been published or disclosed by different bug bounty hunters. You can pretty much click into these. And for example, this one is a blind SSRF. It was a duplicate, but you can see how they were able to exploit it. What was their exploit and actually see the interaction with that particular user or that particular team. And in some cases you can see the bounty amount. So for another one that we're going to take a look at, let's look at one that actually got a bounty. Uh, this one is a hacker one report of its own bug running program on hacker one. You can see this was a request they made and this is where they changed the ID and what was the implication of this vulnerability. So it's a really good place to learn about the hacker mentality, kind of seeing how hackers look at these vulnerabilities, what are their approaches, what are the different vuln types they use, or what are the techniques that they're using when it comes down to bug bounty hunting. Bug Crowd also has their own version of this. It's called the CrowdStream, and you can see right here, you can click on Disclosed Reports, and Disclosed Reports, what it does is also shows you, very similar to Hacker One, it shows what the vulnerability title was. So we're gonna click on this command injection, and you can see what was the details of the vulnerability, their POC, and you can also see the interaction with that program. And at the top, you can see if there was a bounty reward, it was a priority and so on. So these two are really good places to read. Honestly, it's a really, really good place to get familiar with what other hackers are doing and also learn about new techniques and new vulnerability types. Okay, so those are just built by these bug bounty platforms. There are also Twitter accounts like Disclosed H1 that you can go follow. I'll put that link down below as well. But there's also a course that you also have the option of doing paid courses. I think a lot of these courses are free coming from someone who has created a Udemy course. I think a lot of these topics are available for free, but if you're somebody that needs a course and you want to just learn from someone directly like myself, I'll put down my Udemy course down below. You can click on it. I think right now it's on sale for, I think, $15. If you want to spend more money and learn from me directly, I will also link that down below in the description for you to check out. But there's also certifications for web hacking. Personally, I really don't think you need a certificate like CEH or Pentest Plus. Those are the two that come up a lot of times that are that have been pretty much uh, talked about in a lot of different ways. I really don't think you need those. If you want to prove that you're good at web hacking, I honestly think you should avoid getting a certificate and go hack on these different VDPs and bug bounty programs and instead put those on your resume because just having a ton of certifications doesn't mean anything but being able to say you've hacked a company like Yahoo, Google or Facebook and putting it on your resume shows direct way of showing your technical skills that's in the real world. But that's a topic for another video. Maybe we'll talk about it later on but I want to kind of make this video and talk about these different resources that are available to you. And hopefully this makes up for the lack of resources in my roadmap that I made earlier this year. All right, that's it. Do me a favor. We're on the road to a hundred thousand subscribers. We're almost at 90,000. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. What happens is you get notified every Monday when I drop a brand new video and you can also become a Nahomi and be a part of the group. All right, that's it. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.